Hey guys! So today I'm going to be doing my next installment on my videos on my trip to Japan. And this video is just all about all the awesome stuff I did in Tokyo and Osaka. Also, if you're thinking about going to Japan and you want to know more in detail like where I stayed and how I traveled around and food and stuff like that, I'm going to be doing another video on that. So when I first got to Japan, uh, the first place I was staying was in Tokyo. Hello. This guy is easily my favorite. It's my favorite. <laughs> cat cafes are kind of all over Japan. So I went and checked out this cat cafe and it was so fun and there was so many different types of cats there and there was just this really cute pet shop where they'd have like all these little mini pictures of all the different breeds of miniature dogs and everything everyone's miniature uh, yeah so that was really cute that's kind of what I did on the first day the next hotel I stayed in was more in the kind of area where all the amazing shops were and this was probably my favorite area to stay in Japan and that was in Shibuya. Something to check out is the famous Shibuya crossing which is just this gigantic shopping crossing which is in a lot of movies and stuff it's very famous it's in Lost in Translation and a bunch of other movies so that's something really cool to check out. One of my favorite things I did in Japan was I went to the Studio Ghibli Museum. Studio Ghibli films are really famous uh, anime films. You may have heard of some of them like Spirited Away is a really popular one. Uh, my favorite one is Howl's Moving Castle. There is like he makes so many awesome anime films, uh, animation films and you can go and check out the actual museum and you can have a look at some of the original sketches that have been drawn and you can go and eat at the little cafe where they have food that they make up like it looks in the movies. It's basically just like a really interesting little place to check out. Here's the map. They have all these stop motion animations and they have all these little installations of different art and it's just it's really cool and quirky and if you're into uh, the Studio Ghibli movies then you'll really enjoy going. If you're not a Ghibli fan you can still go and check it out. Uh, you might not enjoy it as much as if you you are a fan but if you if you are a fan of the Studio Ghibli films then it's definitely a must see when you're in Japan because it is just one of those really unique experiences and I really really enjoyed going there it's uh, it's really affordable to go but they the tickets sell out really really fast so I actually had to buy one online and pay about three or four times the original price uh, through a third party kind of online website so if you are thinking about going to Japan and you want to go to the Ghibli Museum I recommend booking your tickets way in advance online otherwise you will have to go on a site like Voyagin and pay a lot more for your tickets even then it was still worked out to be about $50 to go so that's something that I really enjoyed going to Probably the craziest, actually no, sorry, the craziest thing I did in Japan, which is a must, must see, is go to the robot restaurant. And the robot restaurant is this insane, oh, I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to describe it, well actually, okay. So basically, from my understanding, the guy that made this robot restaurant was just obsessed with robots and presumably half-naked women and he put millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars into building this crazy robot restaurant and I'm gonna put some footage in as I'm talking so you can get a better idea so basically you just book your tickets and you go in and they there's two there's rows of seats on either side of this open area and it's a giant robot show and they're, they're real robots that got, come out and they're gigantic and then there's giant stages that come out and there's all these amazing Japanese women wearing these ex 
crazy outfits and they're like you know in this like mirrored lingerie and they're just dancing around like crazy and there's robot fights and it is just such a typical like Tokyo experience and it, it really is a must see. I do recommend if you go that you get something to eat and you pay extra to get the bento box. Uh, I did and you know it was really good. Yeah the robot restaurant is definitely a must see. Uh, the building is just so extravagant and it's just all so colourful and rainbow and mirrors and just yeah it is really a must see so if you are going to Japan I recommend going to see the robot restaurant show you won't regret it it's definitely one of the coolest things that I did in Japan bit more on the traditional side that I went and saw was the Sensoji temple and this was in Tokyo as well 
and the day I went was really beautiful because it was snowing and it's just this gigantic temple uh, it's just uh, when you're there I definitely recommend going to see at least one temple because they're just really beautiful and interesting to look around and yeah I just loved having the like a relaxing day walking around the temple and there's lots of little kind of miniature shops and markets just off the Sensoji temple that have all like traditional kimonos and they sell like the traditional flower arrangements for your hair for um, geishas and they have a range of different food so the market just off the Sensoji temple is really beautiful as well so uh, yeah that's that's the temple I went to that I really enjoyed My number one thing that I did in Tokyo and was one of the reasons I really wanted to go to Tokyo is to check out Tokyo Disneyland which is said to be the best Disneyland in the world. Now I have nothing to compare it to because I haven't been to Disneyland before but I had the most amazing time. I seriously, I was there on my own and I didn't expect to have such a good time on my own but people were so friendly and so many people were just coming up and talking to me. It was amazing and I'm going to kind of fill you in on my my experience in Disneyland and some advice for you if you're thinking about going. So here's, I kept the map and as you can tell Disneyland in Tokyo is a very big place and there is little kind of worlds within Disneyland to go and check out. You really need to get there first thing in the morning because you need at least one day to get around this place. Not even joking you, like even just walking around it takes pretty much the whole day. Uh, and I made the mistake of not buying the uh, fast pass. The fast pass is something in both Disneyland and Universal Studios which I'll talk about after but it basically gives you quick access to the rides and I really wish and if I went back I would get there first thing in the morning and get the fast pass uh, you just pay extra and you get in the quicker line because the rides waiting for the rides takes forever some of the rides take hours like hours and hours uh, but I did manage to get on a few rides. I really like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. You're basically in like a little ship and you go around and they have all these animated uh, characters from Par Pirates of the Caribbean and you, yeah, it basically goes through and it's like a pirate world in, inside and you're going along the water and it was just really beautiful to look at and really interesting. So the Pirates of the Caribbean ride was really fun. A similar kind of ride that I went on uh, that was also just really beautiful to look at was It's a Small World and that's the same. You're in the boat and you go through and you go through all the different kind of countries in the world or you know a lot of the countries in the world and it's that song like It's a Small World After All and um, it's kind of creepy I guess in a way because it's all these little dolls like waving their heads and to the song but if you guys have seen The Simpsons you probably remember that episode with Lisa where she goes crazy uh, when she's on that ride. I went on Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin which is in a car again but this one's more like a twisty turny ride going through Toontown and it's a lot more jerky and it's I don't even know how to describe these rides or how they make them but yeah there there's the rides are amazing. The Toontown is another one I went on. The last ride that I went on, which is for me was a big deal because I am terrified of roller coasters. I am terrified of them. And I was lining up for Space Mountain and I didn't realize it was a roller coaster. Anyway, I'd, I'd waited like an hour and a half for this ride. So I got to the front and then someone in the line had said something like, oh, I can't wait to get on this roller coaster. And I was like, 
shit, what? <laughs> this is a roller coaster? Uh, but I'd, I'd waited the whole time, so I decided to go on it. It wasn't probably the most scary roller coaster in the world, but what made it pretty scary was that it's pitch black in there, and there's just all these lights coming out at you, and then you get the drops, and it is a little bit like, ah, but in, it's just really jerky, so, but it's probably one of the best rides to go and check out at Disneyland. Unfortunately, a lot of the ones that I wanted to go out on were out of order, like the Splash Mountain, probably because it was the middle of winter. But yeah, so there's a few of the rides I went on that I recommend going on. Food in Disneyland is so cool because it's all Disney themed and Disney shaped, so you can get like Mickey Mouse shaped pizzas. Something really cool to check out as well, which you don't have to wait for, but I would recommend trying to get there early so you can be at the front is the parades. I saw both parades. Uh, one of them is called like the happiness parade or something like that and that's the daytime parade and they're just, the, the parades are amazing. But I'm going to show you some footage of my absolute favourite part of the day which was the nighttime dreamlights parade which is similar to the daytime one except it, everything is completely dark. The whole park goes dark and all of these amazing floats and characters are covered in millions and millions of lights and it's just, you have to see it to understand how absolutely awesome it is. But yeah, so the Dreamlights Parade I would absolutely recommend going to see if you're going to Disneyland and like I said make sure you give yourself a full day to get around because the rides do take a long time in to wait for and it's just a, it's just a big park much of a chance to go out clubbing there. I went to two clubs. I went to one in Tokyo and one in Osaka and the reason for that it was because I was on my own. I felt a little bit scared going but I did have a contact in Japan for a really awesome club 
in Tokyo which was called New Lex and I'll give you the details of the club but it's basically a model and celebrity club so they have a VIP section and it was awesome because when I came they put my name up on the saying welcome to New Lex Sarah and it was I got to sit in the VIP section and you know get free drinks and get spoiled and everyone was so lovely and it was just the most it was an awesome night it was so much fun uh, so yeah New Lex was the one club I went to in Tokyo the reason I didn't also go to a lot of clubs is because alcohol is so cheap in Japan like crazy cheap it's pretty much the same price as soft drink and you'd go to like the equivalent of a 7-eleven and you could buy a pre-mixed drink for for pretty much a dollar fifty so I was worried that I'd be spending my whole trip hungover so I tried not to go out too much uh, but that's the club that I went to when I was in Tokyo. So they're kind of some of the main things I did when I was in Tokyo, uh, as well as like heaps of shopping and just general wandering around. It was my first trip so I kind of, you know, spent a long time just walking around. Uh, then I took the bullet train to Osaka for my last five days of my trip. One of the first things I did in Osaka was check out the aquarium. The aquarium is a must-see in Osaka. It is so beautiful and unlike a lot of other aquariums I've been to, uh, you can get really close to the animals and you just see everything clearer and they have a lot of interesting... They have a lot of interesting like types of seals there and uh, the penguins and the jellyfish were actually amazing. I'm really intrigued by jellyfish. But the aquarium was so beautiful and it was so nice seeing all like the, the little creatures and stuff. So it's one of the meant to be one of the best aquariums in the world. So I recommend seeing the Asaka Aquarium. And while you are in the area, there is also a gigantic Ferris wheel. If you're not scared of heights, then I recommend going on it. Unfortunately, when the day I went, it was out of order, but it's like a huge, 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 huge Ferris wheel, and it overlooks Osaka. So if you are at the aquarium, make sure you get over to the Ferris wheel as well. It's just called like the Osaka wheel or something like that. I did set aside a day to go to Universal Studios. And my experience at the Universal Studios was unfortunately not as great as my experience in Disneyland. I, for a number of reasons, I mean, it was just so much more busy. I got there first thing in the morning, but I still had to queue for ages, and I missed out on the Fast Pass, so I, the, the few rides that I did go on, and by few, I mean very few. I waited hours and hours and hours. I'm pretty sure the only ride I went on when I was in Universal Studios was the Back to the Future ride, which was a cool ride, but I I had the whole day there, and half the rides were out of order, and the other ones had queues that were just so huge. Uh, the reason I went to Universal Studios was mostly to see the Harry Potter uh, area, and the queues were just so crazy that it kind of ruined it because firstly you can't just walk over to the Harry Potter bit you have to line up and get a ticket so you can go later in the day and then when you have that ticket you have to line up to get into there and then if you want to just go to the merchandise shops you have to join a queue that goes all around the shops for that if you want a picture next to the train there's like a gigantic queue for that uh, by the time I got into the the lolly shop, because I wanted to get some of the Birdie Bots beans, they were like $30 for a thing of jelly beans. And I paid something like $18 for a chocolate frog, a Harry Potter chocolate frog, with one of the uh, cards. So I just found Universal Studios to be a lot more of a wait and a lot more gimmicky, like a lot everything was just really overpriced at Universal Studios. In saying that, it was really nice walking around and checking it out. Uh, I also liked a lot of the little vintage shops that were around Universal Studios and I went and ate at this little shrimp place that was just outside and it was really yummy because the food as well at Universal Studios was so expensive. I mean, I'm sure if I'd had the Fast Pass 
that my day would have been a lot more enjoyable. <laughs> On my last night there, I was like, I need to do something awesome. I need to go and do something crazy because I haven't done enough crazy things on my trip. Anyway, I found out that Molly Crew were playing in Osaka and it was their very last tour. Their very, very, very last tour that they were ever going to have. And I was like, that's good. that would be sick, like seeing Motley Crue in Osaka. I need to get tickets for this thing. So I, it seemed to be sold out, but I called the venue and I was like, is there any way you have a spare ticket? Uh, and I managed to get a ticket, so I ran down there. It was a big rush. I got all heavy metal glammed up and I got the ticket and yeah, I basically went and saw Motley Crue and it was... It was just so amazing. Um, the thing is, okay, in Australia or America, if you go to see like a heavy band or whatever, like a rock band, the everyone pushes and shoves and is really rude and there is no chance of you getting to the front. But in Japan, I had one of the worst tickets for this show, but everyone was so just nice and polite that I managed to get right to the front of the barricade pretty much, like a few people that back because everyone was just standing there enjoying the band and they had no issue with me going to the front so I had a really great view of the show the highlight of the show was that Tommy Lee was on this uh, platform which revolved and went right, right up through the ceiling and he was like on the ceiling of this stadium with you know thousands of people in it playing drums upside down in this stadium <laughs> just absolutely insane and probably the coolest one of the coolest live gigs I've ever been to just because it was such a great show and I can say that uh, I saw the very last Motley Crue show like the the last tour so it was so awesome I kept my ticket the final tour in Japan so there you go I went and saw Motley Crue that was so awesome I ended up meeting this girl at the sh after the show and she was like, oh, can I have a photo with you? And then I started talking to her. I was like, what are you doing tonight? And then she was going the same bar as I went to. And this is a really famous club in Osaka, uh, like a little bar. And it's where all the bands go after they've toured. Unfortunately, Molly Crew didn't come, but it's called Rock Rock. And if you're into rock music, or like punk music, I really recommend going checking it out in Osaka. It's a really small little venue, but it has all these Polaroids on the walls of all these bands that have come to this venue. Everyone you can imagine, like Manson has been there. Every every punk or rock person you can imagine has pretty much come to this venue. And the, the drinks are really cheap, and they have a, like a cocktail menu, and they just play awesome music. So I hung out with this girl all night and made a bunch of new friends. So it was just such a great way to end my trip. That's pretty much the main things I did in Japan. If you guys want to know anything else about my trip, make sure to leave a comment below. And I will be back with the rest of my videos to do with Japan shortly. And thank you for tuning in. Thanks guys. Mwah.